Hallelujah. Truly the Lord is good. His Lord is great and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. The Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. Today is the day, amen, that we're going to give God all we got and give God glory, give him praise. Hallelujah. And we just continue to lift him up. Amen. And then you all get into this service and allow God to use you in any way. Amen. And I pray that you don't leave here the same way you came. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise as the deacons come forward to leave us in our morning devotion. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, SMBC. Hallelujah. Glad when they said unto let us go into the house of the Lord. So we're just going to have a good time in the service today. We're asking each and every one of us to just let's give God the praise. Amen. Give him the praise. It's a beautiful day out. It's a beautiful day in here. It's good to see all your smiling faces. So we're just going to praise God and give him all the glory Hallelujah. and all the honor. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, SNBC. 
booty whoop. This morning's scripture be coming from Psalms 51. And I'm going to read from 8 to 14. And if you can stand for the reading of God's word, amen. amen. And if you can't stand, amen. But when you find Psalms 51, verse 8 to 14, say amen. amen. And it reads, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that thy bones which thou have broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and bolt out all my uniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the way, and sinners should be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thy God of my salvation, and my tongue should sing out loud of thy righteousness. I have read for you Psalms 51, verse 8 to 14. May the Lord have a blessing on the readers, doers, and hearers of his holy word. Amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. Let us let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning on the Lord you day you met, Lord, and we'll never see again. And then, dear Master, we ask that you would just come into this place and grab our hearts, Lord. Marinate them like you do when you're making that favorite meat, your steaks yeah. or your ribs. Or your... And then, Master, we ask that you would just marinate our hearts, Lord, and tenderize them Make it suitable for you. God, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, Lord. But this morning, Lord, we, we're we just going to pause and say thank you. First, Lord, we're going to pause because you touched us with a finger of love this morning and woke us up. And the good thing about waking us up, we were all in our right minds where we could put on our clothes and head our way towards the church house. And then, Lord, we looked in those closets, and I don't know about you all, but I ain't never had so many choices. Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then, Master, you give us the right mind to pick something that's suitable for the house. God, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon. Matter of fact, Lord, you disposed with so many blessings, we couldn't begin to count them all. A lot of those blessings, Lord, we didn't even know anything about. As I look back over my life, and I'm sure everyone else can look back over life, how far you brought us, Lord. Some of us riding in very nice vehicles and living in nice homes and Fridge probably full of food and ain't got a freezer in the garage or the basement. Man, that's a blessing, Lord. That's a blessing. I was riding the other day and I seen a guy with a sign that said, We'll work for food. Man, Lord, we just don't know sometimes how blessed we really are. Could have been your eye with that sign. Could have been your eye, Lord, that we was up on the one of those bridges. Yeah. Uh, didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. Yeah. And so we should pause and say thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord, for you blessing us for a lot of things we don't deserve. We're going to say thank you anyway. Yeah. Now, dear God, we uh, dear God, we're going to call out your name. We're going to call out your name, Lord, because you brought it to our attention just how good you really are. Yeah. And 
the good thing about you, Lord, you didn't forsake us. All of us ain't always been in church on Sunday morning, y'all. He was with us then. I heard a man say about the juke joint last Sunday. We all had a juke joint or some shape. Born in sin. Yeah. Huh. And then, and then, Master, you picked us up. Huh. You brought us a mighty long ways. And you keep on blessing us. Thank you, God. Now, dear God, we ask that you would just pop up the man that's going to bring the word. Give him up right spirit so he can deliver that word to your people. Amen. And then master, if he needs a little help, grab and hold on to him. Master. If he needs a little help, you provide some words for him. Master. If he needs a little help, master, you put that spirit to walk with him. And we'll be careful. We'll be careful, Lord, to give you all the honor. We'll be careful, Lord, to give you all the praise. We'll be careful, Lord, when you put that person, man or woman, of God, like you. God, you a big God. You a mighty God. You are God who can make mistakes. You are an awesome God. We could go all day long with words describing how wonderful you are. But we'll pause now, man. We'll pause at this time of the service and just sit there. These blessings be asked for the Lord Jesus. Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank God. God reigns. God reigns. Our God reigns. The Lord to reign, reign above every name. See, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. The Lord to reign, reign above every name. With power. With power and majesty. Dominion, authority. You reign. With power, with power and majesty, oh, yeah. dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, see my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. The Lord to reign above every name. See my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. The Lord to reign above every name. With power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. With power, with power and majesty, oh, yeah. dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, see my God reign. My God reign. See my God reign. My God reign. See Lord to reign above every name. See my God reign. My God reign. See my God reign. My God reign. See Lord to reign above every name. With power. With power and majesty. Dominion, authority. With power, with power and majesty, oh, yeah. dominion, authority, you, you reign. reign. See, oh, see my God reign. See my God reign. See our God reign. Our God reign. See Lord to reign above. See my God reign. See my God reign. See our God reign. Our God reign. See Lord to reign. 
with power. People know he rained on today. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say he rained on the day. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand praise on today? Amen. 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 The king is exalted, and I will praise him. He is exalted, the king is exalted, and I will praise his name. He is exalted. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And I will praise Him. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And I will praise Him.
exalted. He is exalted. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And I will praise Him. He is exalted. The King is exalted. And I will praise His name. to you this morning. Amen. Knowing that we serve a, a God that's full of praise, that we ought to praise him 
with everything, even in our finances, we praise him because he said that he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Hallelujah. Please govern your hearts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give God glory this morning. Praise the Lord. Little Miss Erica, I got to tell y'all a little quick story as, they, as we're lifting up the offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. She hurt her knee in school the other day. And because she called that knee injury on herself, she said nothing. Because that's how she is. Because she feel like I just got to take it. So she just got progressively worse. And the knee began to swell. And I had to take her to the doctor. <laughs> but this is the part I want to share with you all. She said, Mommy, I came in here for a knee injury. Why do they have to take blood? She just didn't understand that. They trying to see if there was any infection. Amen. But my daughter is like, how are they going to get this blood? I said, well, Erica, because I got to give her a heads up on what she get ready and gay because I don't want her to lose her little tiny mind. Amen. So she said, mommy, they going to stick a needle in me to take this blood. I said, that's how they get it, Erica. And she said, okay, mommy. I had to have her in a wheelchair because I couldn't carry it. She's too heavy now. So I put her in a wheelchair. She let everybody know this is temporary. But 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 this is the blood thing, amen. This is the thing that took me and I, I had to put a praise on it. She said, Mommy, I'm just gonna wheel myself over here for just a minute. I said, Erica, you want me to come over there with you? She didn't need company. She said, I gotta do this by myself. You said they're gonna stick a needle in me and take my blood. I just needed a time, some time to process this thing. So Erica wheeled herself. She said, I'm not going to go in the middle. I don't want to mess nobody able to talk, walk. So she go back in the middle with that wheelchair, and she did this, y'all. She dropped her head, and she prayed. Yeah. Good timing, deacons. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for these offerings that have been raised, Lord God. Lord, we ask that they be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for those that gave and wasn't able to give, Lord God, that they be able to give in the next offering. And Lord, we continue to thank you, Lord God, for providing for us. And Lord, we continue to lift you up and magnify your most holy name. And Lord, these things we ask in Christ Jesus' name, we do pray and we said, amen. Amen. So my baby went over there and prayed. And she took that blood work like a rock star. Amen. She said, Mommy, I already prayed about this thing. Hallelujah. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to do any harm. I prayed about it. And I gave it to God. Hallelujah. Every now and then, we need to go off into our own self. Amen. That little corner in the wall of your own house. And we need to just talk to the Lord because we got some tests that's getting ready to take place. Amen. But God says, I got you. Amen. And she knew where her help came from. Amen. Y'all got to give God a hand. God will praise for that one. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think we have an announcement this morning. Amen. Remembering your work of faith and labor of love. First Thessalonians, first and three. Pastor Lewis and members, thank you for the kindness shown to our family during the loss of my dad, John Moses. Your acts of love meant so much. May God bless you all richly. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Asking the Lord to bless you in return for the many ways your life is blessing to others through your ministry. In Jesus' precious name, Brenda Thomas and family. Amen. 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 With special thanks to all of you, I know you is to know people who are kind, considerate, and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for special things you do. For everything you've done, for being the special people that you are, thank you so very much, the most. Amen.
praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Oh, I sing praises to your name. And greatly to be praised. Oh, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory, exalted high, and the train of his road it filled the temple and the angels camped around him and cried and we 
sing now that you are holy, also holy, you are holy, Lord of all. Let's sing you. You 
Can we sing that as a church? That Say amen as Minister Young come, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are holy. Lord, you are holy. How many know we serve a holy God? Amen. Amen. Awesome God. An amazing God. We serve a God that's do, able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another day, Father God, keeping us in our right mind, Lord. Another opportunity, Lord, just to bless your name, Father God. Father, Lord, even now, touch your people, Father Lord. We've came in with various trials and tribulations, Lord, but we know we serve a God that's able. We know we serve a God that's able. We know that we serve a God that's able. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for what you're about to do, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father, Lord, for what you've already done, Lord. And Father, Lord, we be careful to lift your name up, Father God. Give you all the praise, Lord. All the glory, Father God. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I give honor to my heavenly father, the bishop in his absence, man, the ministers on the roster. Amen. To the SMBC family. Amen. To my father who came to support me. Amen. And to my wife. Amen. I won't be before you long. I'll be coming from first Kings, the 17th chapter. And the twelfth verse, and also First Kings nineteenth and the fourth verse. First Kings seventeen and twelve, right. and then First Kings nineteen and fourteen. Amen. And it reads. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel right. and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. First Kings 19 and four. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a Jupiter tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I'm not, I am not better than my father's. And man, I'm going to deal with those two verses. And the title is at the point of giving up. At the point of giving up. 
Hey Amen. We, we are living in a time where it seems easy to just give up. Hey Amen. The more you turn on the TV, the more you hear of mental illnesses and how to deal with them. When people say life is lifing, and some take it as a saying, but for some, the amount of stress, the amount of anxiety, depression, and burnout that you're dealing with on a day-to-day basis can literally have you at the point of giving up. For whatever reason, you're in that mind frame. It could be health issues, financial issues, home issues, work issues, loss of loved ones. Things that we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis can have you at the point of giving up. For many cannot think of no other way out but to just give up. I mean, as I was looking at this last year, they said more than 50,000 people committed suicide, which is the highest ever in the United States. And each year around 1,200 die of murder suicide. So that means someone took someone else's life and committed suicide afterwards. I mean, just a few weeks ago, there was a a couple who I believe worked at the VA and the, the, the husband took the wife's life and the son's life and then took his life. I mean, you don't know what people are dealing with in their day-to-day walk. Hmm. You don't know what struggles they're going through, what type of anxiety, depression, or stress, how, how, how bad it's built up. Amen. I mean, but they have to be under so, so much pressure to say, I want to take my life. I mean, or I'd rather die than deal with what I'm dealing with. A lot of times we can think we are so strong that we think we anxiety or depression can't affect us. We think we, we, we're beyond that. But when I look at the definition, I can say we all been down this road before. Anxiety means a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Typically an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. When you don't know what tomorrow holds, you have anxiety. You worrying about, am, am I going to make it through this? What is the doctor going to say? Will I be able to pay this bill? I'm, I'm, I don't want to go home. I, I got work issues. You know, I, my loved one may be dying. You're dealing with all type of things. And the anxiety's building up. And you at the point of just wanting to just give it up. I don't want to deal with this no more. Depression means a constant feeling of sadness and a loss of interest. Amen. You so bad that you just lose interest on life. You lose interest on tired of dealing with situations, tired of dealing with the day to day struggle. When life has hit you so hard that you don't even have interest in finishing the race, we have to call on a higher power. At this point in life, we can give up or as the song says, fight on. And man, when we look at this text, Elijah was told to dwell in Zarephath. And a widow woman will sustain him. Elijah at the time didn't know when he met this woman, she would be at the point of giving up. Mm. Just imagine God telling you to go somewhere and you you come and you see this consonance on a person's face and they're at the point of giving up. You look like, well, well God, how is they going to help me? I see the struggle all over them. <laughs> she was destitute and desolate. In her mind, she was slowly dying. I mean, this woman told Elijah, I have enough food for one last meal for her and her son to eat and die. I mean, this woman, we could say that was dealing with all type of anxiety and depression. It was all over. She was hopeless. I mean, how many of us been in a situation where it just feels hopeless? You just don't feel like you got no way out. But even in her situation, even in our situation, God said, I'm here to help you. I mean, one thing about God, he'll send his help from somewhere we least expect it. I mean, it says somewhere that, you know, you entertain strangers unaware. Uh huh. You don't know who God going to send in your path. You don't know who God going to send to help you. Uh I mean, but we always got to be in a position to say, Lord, if I've been praying for it, I don't know where my answer going to come from, but I know it's coming. Amen. I mean, we can't be too high minded when strangers come up to us that we ain't got, we turn our nose at them. That may be the answer God sent you. I mean, if you read this text, this widow woman, the uh, the prophet Elijah told the widow woman to go fetch some some water, and she was willing to go do that. 
I mean, a total stranger. I mean, I can only imagine how Elijah looking at this woman and the state of mind she was in. And in the back of his mind, he was thinking, this woman can't be the God said will sustain me. She probably was, he probably was thinking about he was going to go to some big house, a big fancy house, and a woman, you know, uh, had butlers and maids was going to come out and, and, and treat him to a fine deal. But it was a desolate woman, a woman who felt like giving up. A woman didn't have no more hope. Amen. All her joy was gone. Uh -huh. All her peace was gone. This was the woman God said, this is the woman that I commanded to sustain thee. We talking about a woman so short on food. She was preparing for her last meal and then to die. The hard facts of her situation, she was at the point of giving up. Many of us have, have, have been going through life and we're at the point of giving up. We may not be ready to give up on life, but we're ready to give up on that job. Give up on that marriage. Give up on that friendship. Give up on that church. Give whatever it is that's important, you're ready to give up on it. You at that point, you said, I'm tired of dealing with this every day. I've been praying to you, God, there ain't nothing got better. This widow woman, we don't know uh, for a person to get to this point of wanting to give up. That means she's been dealing with this situation for a long time. We don't know how long, but it says she was a widow. We don't know how long she was a widow. We don't know how long it took her to get to this last meal. It could have been a year or two. It could have been five to ten years. We don't know how long it took. But she was at that point now where day by day went by and she ate and ate and, and, and didn't have no hope of getting food elsewhere. We just know at this point she was on her last meal. And sometimes God will let you go through a situation day by day, month by month, year by year. And you think it ain't going to get no better. But when you at your last hope, when you at your last point of, Lord, I don't know, I can't make it another day. He said, I'm going to send you a prophet. I'm going to send you someone to say that you there's still hope. Amen. I've been commanded to come fix your situation. Amen. The reality of the situation is not only have some of us been at this point, uh -huh. but we also have thoughts of giving up on God. Amen. I mean, let, let, let's, let, let's be honest. When, sometimes you go through some things in life and you like, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm, 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 I, I've been dealing with this for so long. I, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of church. I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of reading. Sometimes you're just tired of being tired. You 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 you, you, you just want to go through the motions for the rest of your life Amen. because this thing has beat you down so much. Depression has beat you down so much. You lost all interest of just day to day, and and, and you just tired. And Elijah assessed the situation, and he heard the woman. His words to her was, "Fear not, fear not." God is saying, "Fear not. I know you're ready to give up. I know your health situation don't seem like it's getting better." I know them bills is piling up. I know that job is getting on you. I know the household is, is too much for you at this moment. And even though you tired of it, even though you ready to give up, you lay down every night saying, Lord, if you just take me, I'll be happy. But God said he sent someone to tell you even today to fear not. Hmm. My late mentor had a saying, fear not the challenge, but challenge the fear. Some things in life you may fear the challenge of dealing with. But fear not that challenge, but challenge that fear. Go after that fear. You say, how can you go after that fear? When you get to the point of just wanting to give up, read a little bit more. He'll send you a scripture for you. Pray a little bit more. Uh -huh. He'll give you words to say if you just, maybe just there mumbling. He'll give you what to say. And Elijah was moving in faith because he sent those words to calm her. God will give you a word to calm you. No matter how bad it may get. He'll send something or someone to let you know everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Elijah was moving in faith because he know what God promised him. Elijah in that ninth verse, God promised him, he said, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. No matter what it looked like to Elijah. No matter what it seemed like to Elijah. He said, Lord, I'm going to move in faith. 
I know it don't look like the, the woman that I would think that you would send to me. But this woman says she got one last meal. And not only did he know that God promised him, but he began to speak as if that promise was already fulfilled. He knew this woman had one last meal. But yet he said, go fix me a plate first. He's moving in faith. He's moving on God's promises. He's not looking at what it looked like. Yeah, the doctor may gave you a report you're not happy with. He's not, don't look at that report. Look at the promise God gave you. Yeah, your boss is getting on your nerves and you may get fired. Don't look at that report. Look at the promise God gave you. He said he'll open up windows that you won't have room enough to receive. So yeah, you may have to take a step back to take two steps forward, but it's all a part of God's promise. He told her to fix his food first. Uh huh. And Elijah and the widow women had to deal in faith. I read that faith is a step between promise and fulfillment. So God will promise you some things. And in order to get to the fulfillment part, you got to move in faith. All right. So when he promises he's going to do something and you never get to the fulfillment part because then your faith begins to say, Lord, you just won't do it. I give up. When you at that point of just giving up, God said, I can't get to that fulfillment part until you move in faith, until you trust me, until you exercise that faith for the fulfillment to come to pass. You can say what God did for the widow women was a miracle. A miracle seems so out of reach for our feeble faith. When God says he's going to do something, we don't look at it. We don't see a lot of times how he's going to do it. Yeah. We don't understand it. Yeah. We're like, Lord, that's so far. I, I, I can't even imagine me getting to that point. You know, when, 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 when a lot of times when we go to the doctors and, and we get these reports and, and, and we have to go through this process or whatever we're dealing with, we don't, we're not looking at the end of it. All we're looking at is day to day. We got to deal with it. I wake up every day. I got this struggle. I wake up every day, I got this pain. I wake up every day, I got this situation. It may not be your health. It may be the job. It, it may be your marriage. Whatever you're dealing with day to day, we don't see the fulfillment of it because the anxiety of dealing with the, 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 the stress we under, the anxiety of dealing with that situation is beating us up so bad, we can't imagine the fulfillment. The fulfillment may be a day away, but, but, that, but, that, but that last day we beat up so bad. That last day, we just ready to throw in the towel. We, that, that last day, we said, Lord, if I just go to sleep, I just want to die. When you're at the point of giving up, you can say what God did for the widow woman was a miracle. We can't see miracles in our life until we move. We are obedient and move in faith. Some things in our life, God has been telling us to move in faith, but we scared for some reason. We just don't trust God to bring it about. I mean, we'll trust everybody but God. We'll depend on everybody but God. But God is saying, if you just move in faith, if you just trust me, I'll bring whatever you're looking for to pass. I mean, shortly after this encounter with the widow woman, Elijah had his own encounter. In 19 and 4, the prophet was on the run from Jezebel, and he was at the point of giving up. You know, this, 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 this. The mental thing of anxiety and depression that that we deal with, it it it, it, it don't. If you hold a title in the church, you're the biggest person in the church, the the, the 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 biggest person on your job. No matter how important you think you are, right. and man, that that that, that, that that we can all it can always creep up on us. That's right. That's right. If, if if you think you're bigger and better and better than that thing called anxiety or depression or stress. It can creep up on you and it'll get you to the point of a situation that be, may be small to some of us. But to you, it's like the whole world is about to crash on us. I mean, life will have a way of attacking you that at some point you feel like if God don't do it, uh -huh. then it can't be done. If God don't fix this situation, then it can't be done. I mean, Elijah went from doing the Lord's work to being tired, discouraged. Dealing with anxiety and depression. We talking about the prophet Elijah. Uh -huh. I mean, he just got done experiencing some spiritual victories. One of them was dealing with the widow woman. And at this moment in his life, just a few days later, he was at the point where he felt all alone. Right. 
I mean, he knew the God he served. He called upon the God's name, that God's name, plenty of times in his life. But at this moment, he felt all alone because the enemies wanted his dead. His enemies wanted him dead. When the enemy is coming at you like a flood, we have to know that we still serve a God that's able. When the enemy's coming at you and you feel like you got no more hope in your life, we, we got to know we still serve a God that's able. I mean, the Bible says he went a day's journey in the wilderness. And I can just imagine as he's walking through the wilderness, the enemy's in his mind because that's all anxiety and depression is. The enemy gets in your mind and he tells you you can't make it. You can't see, you can't see past this situation. This situation is too big for you. You see God let it get this far. Why did he save you days earlier? I mean, the enemy began to speak to you. He'll begin to let you know that there's no more hope. I mean, then you begin to lose your joy. You begin to lose your peace. You begin to quit wanting to pray. You begin to quit wanting to talk to God. You become off all by yourself. I mean, you became, become one of those people who sit in the house in just darkness. Because anxiety has took over. You lost interest of just everything. But God is saying, when you at that point, when you at that point of just wanting to give up, when you've been in the wilderness for so long, he says, I, I dare you just to trust me. I mean, the Bible says, Elijah said, I just want to die. And said, it is enough. How many of them know that? How many of them at that it is enough point in their life? I'm tired of, Lord, it's been enough. I'm tired of going to the doctor. I'm tired of this job that ain't paying nothing. I'm tired of this home. I'm tired of just every day. The kids is getting on my nerves. Lord, I'm tired. I lost a love when I'm tired, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to make it, Lord. Lord, I'm just tired. I dare you to have a little talk with Jesus. I dare you to tell him all about it. Tell him all about your troubles. Tell him what you're tired of. Tell him what's been enough. He, he'll hear your problems. He may even answer you by and by. If you call on him in the midnight hour, when you can't sleep at night, when you tossing and turning, when, when the enemy is in your mind saying, Lord, you ain't going to make it through the night, I dare you to get up and get on your knees. Lord, say, I give it all to you. All my trials, all my tri tribulations. Lord, everything I'm dealing with, I'm tired of it, Lord. I'm sick and tired of it, Lord. The pastor can't help me. The preacher can't help me. Lord, send somebody to help me. And just like he sent the angel to Elijah, he gonna send the angel to you. He may not come with food to prepare you physically, to, to, to make you last the rest of the mission he got for you. But he gonna send you something to sustain you. God wants to feed us when we weary and ready to give up. He sent Elijah, if you go on and read the scripture, he sent Elijah, an angel, to feed him for his physical. God may not send us food. Food is my, we, we don't need food. You know, we may need to fast. Many times God wants to feed us through his word and speak victory in our lives. We got to get that negative thinking out of us and let God minister to us. You know, my my few weeks ago, I, I got up in prayer for my son. He was uh at the time he was crossing to become uh, Kappa, and so he you know he he's kind of like me, he's laid back, don't be really chilling. So he was thinking, I guess you know he they made him captain of the line or whatever. So he was like, you know, he was all out his comfort zone. And he went through that thing, and he was dealing with you know because he texted me that morning, he said, "How did the church pray for me?" And it, it was just beat that anxiety was beating them up. When, when you're out your comfort zone, when you don't know how you're going to deal with a situation, that thing can beat you up if you allow it to. And after he went through the whole process and, and he got out, I said, ain't you glad you didn't quit? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my mental state. When you're going through something and anxiety is beating you up, you'll learn a lot about your mental if you go through it. Amen. I told him, you, you you don't look at yourself as a leader. I said, but they see something in you. I said, if you don't beat this thing now, when you get on a corporate job 10 years from now, and they put you in a leadership position, and you got to run this team, that same anxiety is going to come back on you. 
God said, I'm here to strengthen you so we can finish the mission he got for us. Right. If you don't beat what you're dealing with right now, God said, when you get a little bit older, or a few more days, you're going to deal with this same situation now. Just because you feel like giving up now, if you beat it, when you deal with it early, he said, Lord, you brought me through before. I know you can do it again. Not only that, but you can get up and testify of the goodness of God. God still has work for us to do. When you feel let down and at the point of giving up, know that God's purpose for your life is not over. No matter how bad it seems. Just like the widow woman when she went from telling herself that she would suffer and just die from hunger. She went from death to being swallowed up in promise. I mean, she went from despair to hope. She went from sadness to joy. She went from anxiety and depression to peace. He says, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. The Bible says, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If you need me, you are in heaviness. How many of us in heaviness today? Through manifold temptations. That manifold temptation means various trials. Hey, Amen. We're experiencing situations or tests that we don't know how we're going to encounter, how we're going to have the enough strength to endure. But the Bible says the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perishes, Though it be tried with fire, may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. No matter what you're going through, let your trials and tribulations be found unto praise, be found unto honor, be found unto glory. As I look at folks just praise God in here in their own way. Hey Amen. They let they come in here with a praise on their heart because they know what they've been through all week long. They know the news they've got earlier in the week. And they coming in saying, Lord, I just give it all to you. Lord, I'm turning it all over to you. Lord, these tears I'm crying are all because I know you're going to deliver me. I know you're going to set me free. Lord, you know where I'm at in my life right now. But I know I trust you, Lord. I depend on you, Lord. It's you, Lord. It's you, Lord. You telling God, Lord, it's me. It's me standing in the need, Lord. It's me ready to give up, Lord. I'm tired of getting poked on by the doctor. I'm tired of the boss acting like he gonna fire me. I'm tired of all of it. Lord, I'm just tired of being tired. But Lord, I'm here today saying I'm gonna just give it over to you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I'm depending on you. I'm trusting you, Lord. Hey, Amen. I, I look at David when, when, when Amalekites had taken his wives and taken the kids captive. The Bible says David and his men lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. I mean, how many of us are at that point right now? You tired of weeping. You ain't got no more power to cry. You ain't got no more tears to shed. You ain't got no more encouragement in your life. I mean, it all says David was greatly distressed. We've all been there where we just wanted to give up. But we got to be like David sometimes. We got to be able to encourage ourselves, not in not in what man says, not in what not in what the doctor says, but we got to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We got to trust God. And at this point, when we greatly distressed, we know that we've been may endure for a night. Yeah, we've been crying all night. We know we got we know we have trouble. We know no trouble don't last always. We have to know no matter what you're going through, no matter what I'm dealing with. I won't lose my faith. I know my faith is what is what brings the promise to fulfillment. You got to keep your faith because God promised you he was going to bring you out. God promised you. He said his word won't come back fail. But if you keep your faith, if you stay strong in the middle, and one day when you're at that point of giving up, he said, I'm going to fulfill my promise to you if you just trust me. Paul said in Philippians, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have to know that God is able. Even though you having worries, Paul is saying, turn your worries into praying. And as you stop and pray, listen to what God has to say. Don't be a rush to get up off your knees. 
When life begins to life and you had enough and you waiting on an answer from God, he may not come how we think he gonna come. He may not make no big entrance. Elijah witnessed a windstorm, an earthquake, and a fire. But God wasn't in none of that. What you think God may be in, he may not be in. The Bible says God came to him in a still, small voice. When you worried about what other people are doing, and you got your own issues, when you worried about how somebody else is living, what somebody else is dealing with, and you got your own issues, and you at the point to give it up, you got to get on your knees and pray and listen for that still, small voice. We don't know what, how God prepared the widow woman to be ready to meet Elijah. But God had to speak to her. In a still small voice, say, I got help coming. Tell somebody all about your problems. I got help coming. He's going to calm your nerves. He's going to let you know, fear not. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and there be any praise, think on these things. We got to reprogram our mind. When you get that bad report, don't think on that report. Think on those things that are true. God's word is true. Think on those things that are honest. His word is honest. We have to know that God is able. He'll fulfill every promise he made to us. The song says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. If you at the point of ready to give up on God, he sent this word for you today. He said, fear not. Don't give up on me yet. Your answer's on the way. I may just need you to hold on a little bit longer. But don't give up on me. If you just trust me, The fulfillment of my promise is almost there. But I may need you to do just a little bit extra. If you you haven't prayed in a while, he may be waiting on you to pray so he can speak to you in that still, small voice to let you know everything is going to be all right. Amen, as we're standing. As I... God has a way of, of dealing with me where when I preach a message, he'll give me a script or something for my next message. I may not preach for three or four months. And so these last few weeks, I've dealt with three things where I had to encourage somebody. My son, and I got two partners who are business guys. One of them just started a business, fish place, and real successful. And and, and I knew the enemy because he we talked and he said, I, you know, I want this, I'm ready for this, and this, this. But the enemy had gotten his mind where he got to thinking it was too much for him. I said, that's what you want. That's a good problem to have. You got too much, too many people coming in to where you know what you got to do. And he said, he said, B, I'm just ready to give up, man. I, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. I'm just, I said, man, look, I said, that's the enemy. You've prayed for this. You've prayed for this. This is what you wanted. And I talked to people on a Saturday night and I'm downstairs, I'm chilling and you know, he, he interrupted me really, but <laughs> but I knew I had to, I knew I had to take time to deal with him. And he texted me that next morning. He said, "Man, I appreciate you talking to me, man. I needed that." And then I had another partner just the other day who's in the janitorial business with me, and he said, and he was getting he, he, his business is growing. And he's at the point where he's to take the next step where he's having to deal with employees. And he said, "Man, I'm just ready to give up. I'm tired of dealing with these people." I said, "Man, hold on, man." <laughs> <laughs> you know, they call me and he's more a little bit he, he has no no uh he, he just talks and you know he yeah he has no filter and so i'm like hold on man so i talked him off that ledge he said yeah he said you're right you're right and uh i gave him some advice and but the, it just it, that just shows you how the enemy will come up on you at any moment, any moment. and have you think it, i'm just gonna give up i mean i said what you gonna do if you give up on your business where you gonna go you ain't gonna make this type of money on the job cleaning buildings he said, you're right. And God is saying, some of y'all came in here ready to give up on something. I don't know what it is. Only you and God know what your trials and tribulations are. But God is saying, 
trust me. Yes. Depend on me. Yes. And I'll make a way for you. I'll make a way. I'll send you somebody where you, when you least expect it to encourage you. To let you know to fear not. And those two words will just calm you. It'll give you insurance. Lord, you ain't gave up on me yet. So I'm not going to give up on you. I mean, if anyone has desire special prayer, the doors of the church are open. was you through all I have gone through Lord it was you it was you it was you pulling me through It was you, Lord, it was you, pulling me through, Amen. through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you, through all I have gone through. Lord, it was you. No, 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 no. It was you. It was you pulling me through. It was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. When I stumble, when I cry, when I felt like I wanted to die, when my friends turned and they walked away, you were right here, right here to stay. It was you, it was you. Pulling me through. It was you. It was you. Pulling me through. No, no, no. When I stumble, when I cry, when I feel like I wanted to die. When my friends turned and they walked away, you were right here, right here to stay. It was you, it was you. He'll never walk out on you. Say no, never, no, never. Heal that walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Heal never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Heal never walk out on you. No, never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. No, never. No, never. I'm a witness that he'll never say no, never. Say no, never. I'm a witness that 
and he'll never, no, never, no, never, I'm a witness and he'll never, say no, never, say no, never. We're glad to have Ms. Gavin back. Amen. Amen. And she's coming for prayer. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your healing powers, Father God, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, Lord, because we're showing once again, Lord, that you're able to do it, Father God. Oh, Father, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for how you continue, Lord, to touch her, Father God, to strengthen her, Lord, just to show your miracle working power, Father God. And Lord, even now, Lord, continue to do more, Father God. Lord, continue, Lord, just to send your angels just to continue to strengthen her, Father God. Lord, even as she goes through her day to day trials, Father God, let her know, Lord, that she serves a God that's able, Father God, to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think, Father. And, Lord, we just thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing, Father, for what you've done, Lord, and what you're about to do, Lord. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. No, never to you, never on count on you. No, never, no, never, you never on count on you. You, no, never. No, 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 Amen. Before we dismiss, amen. Uh, we want to keep the pastor lifted up in prayers as traveling mercies. Amen. And hopefully, I encourage someone today. Amen. Amen. No, no. Amen. As I say in the one, but I say in the one, I say in all, say in all. Watch, watch, and pray, and pray. Amen. Thank you.